What was the last movie you watched here? Um, I watched uh, Lolita by Stanley Kubrick. And Lolita, did you watch it alone? Or did it no, I watched it with three other people. And Lolita is one of my favorite films. And uh, so decided to watch it just the other night. Uh -huh. Great music. Uh, the theme uh, is a kind of a piano thing. Um, so beautiful. It's, it fits it uh, so perfectly. I don't know who wrote that. Um, but then there's, um, uh, then there's Lolita's theme as well, which is a kind of a strange rock and roll. Uh, but it also works so perfect. Well, rock and roll, we are going to watch now. Your first. That's exactly right. Um, we will be watching now a small scene of Lolita, your favorite film. I oh, oh, good. Yeah. Is that a cynical film or a romantic film? Oh, it's filled with all kinds of things. Um, I don't know what I, word I would use, but um, it's um, a story about, I guess, a time in America, and I'm sure it's got cynicism swimming in there for sure. It's very funny, but it catches something under th there somewhere that is kind of a it catches hidden things and it's an absurd sort of story but incredible performances and it touches on so many truthful things it's it's a great film can you explain something about the hidden things that catches it well catches there's you know humbert humbert um is living a, a totally secret life and uh, filled with paranoia and all kinds of longings and just su suffering. Professor Humbert Humbert is in love with the 12 year old Lolita and to get to her he seduces and even eventually marries the mother of Lolita and in this scene we see him reading a letter of the mother in the room of the daughter. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Hayes asked me to give you this. Thank you very much. <clears throat> this is a confession. I love you. Last Sunday in church, my dear one, when I asked the Lord what to do about it, I was told to act as I am acting now. You see, there is no alternative. I have loved you from the minute I saw you. I am a passionate <laughs> and lonely woman, and you are the love of my life. Now you know. So you will please at once pack and leave. This is a landlady's order. I am dismissing the lodger. I am kicking you out. Go, scram, departez. I shall be back by dinner time. I do not wish to find you in the house, you see. Cherie, if you decided to stay, if I found you at home, which I know I won't, and that's why I'm able to go, go on like this, the fact of your remaining would only mean one thing, that you... <laughs> that you want me as much as I do you as a lifelong mate <laughs> and you you are ready to link up your life with mine forever and ever and be a father to my little girl goodbye dear one <laughs> pray for me <laughs> if you ever pray <laughs> did we see here? Just a, one of the greatest, you know, moments. James Mason was so incredible. Why? What, what? Well, he went um, 
I mean, it's just, it's, I mean, a lot of times you see something and um, you don't need to talk about it, you know, it's just there. And that's uh, one of those things. And what does make him such an actor, such a good, incredible actor? Well, what makes anybody a good actor is um, making it real from a deep place, making it real, not a false note. Um, just um, making it real with, from a deep place. And what place would, would that be? Well, there's place? depths, there's depths. There's the surface, and then <laughs> below the surface, there's depths and depths and depths and depths. And uh, the great ones can catch the, you know, uh, the depth of a character. And when you see someone acting, you know that he has access to those depths. Yeah, they, it's, it's the proof is in the, in the uh, pudding. Would you ever work with James Mason? Of course you would. Well, he's dead. dead. But if you... If, if, if I met him one time, uh -huh. and he was such a great guy. Um, I would have loved to work with James Mason. Love love to work with him. Uh, when, when is someone good to be an actor in your films?